Welcome everyone who has come to study our lesson today. My name is Nanyonjo Magi, uh, Teacher Magi, as many of you may call me. Uh, we are here to study English language as, for, as usual on Fridays. Um, I, I think today, uh, because of time, I may not be able to read the names of the students who responded to the task that I left last week. However, at least I've tried to respond to many of you, especially on my WhatsApp. Um, those I have not, as usual, please be patient. Um, last week we looked at directions, and uh, many of you responded very well. Many of you really wrote the directions very well. Those of you who had a few mistakes, or who made a few mistakes here and there, at least I've, I've given you the corrections, at least you know how to do them better. And those I have not, I will continuously correct you. Now today, I want us to put our focus on letters. I know many of you are like, this should have been our first lesson, yes. Uh, I saved it for later dates like this. The assumption is many of us can be able to write letters, but it may not necessarily be true. This is an area where many teachers think that it's easier for learners or uh, students or candidates to be able to uh, acquaint themselves with. However, we still have so many mistakes that we make here and there. So today I hope by the end of this lesson we should be able to write our letters perfectly and correctly. And we shall not be able to make those mistakes anymore. So maybe we shall begin with the definition. What are letters? Simply, like many of us would think we know what letters are, we can still tell you what they are anyway. So basically this is an art or the art of putting to paper message or communication through media which can then be sent to relatives, friends, or for official use. So we are seeing that letters, first of all, it is the art of writing. Writing. But we are saying to friends, relatives, and sometimes eh, for official, official purposes. Or official purpose. So you're going to realize that while we are writing this document as a letter, we are, first of all, you must employ the art. Or oh, I've always used the word art in our writing. By the writing is an art. It involves a lot of creativity. You must think a lot of what you're going to write before you begin writing. If you ever write anything, however good you are at the language, if you cannot put some creativity, then you may not achieve whatever or whatever you want to achieve or whatever intention the intentions you have are so here we're looking at the art of writing to friends relatives or official purposes so you could write a letter today it's not very common to uh, students write letters even when it is still there in most traditional schools it's there i think it is a very good way of keeping students to in check of their grammar and maybe their skills of writing okay so it's very good to write, because for us during our days, we would write letters to, to friends from one school to another. You send them. You would write letters to your friends, even in the same school, maybe to another, uh, who are in another class, or even sometimes in the same class. But today, that's why maybe we find so many students using slangs, because they're more used to phones and then uh, text, uh, phone texts and so on, with the WhatsApps. And, and, and this, actually, I receive so many students of mine, uh, students on my platform, where they, they write their texts and they're very incomprehensible, I would think. You may call it a cake. The teacher is a cake. The teacher is not in the modern what? The modern, um, the modern era. I'm not for, but if we are looking at English language, we must be focused at uh, writing the correct way. If it is a word that should be written, please write it so well so that the person can really understand what you are writing. Some of us may not be able to understand the short forms that you think you may be able to use. But here now, well, let's go back to letters. So we are saying it is an art. You must put some creativity while you're writing. It could be to a relative. <clears throat> Relatives could include um, your parents, could include your maybe aunties, uncles, and so many people you're related to. And then friends. I have mentioned that some of us used to write letters. They could be friends that, you ch that changed school or you were with in primary and then secondary. They are uh, they're in uh, other schools and you also in another. So you write to yourselves and for us during our time, those times we even had penny posts. Friends who were outside the country. Uh, but today it's very easy because you just WhatsApp them, you just, uh, you have, uh, uh, you have Instagrams, you have, uh, and so many other media that will provide you communication. 
But those days we used to write those letters. And I, th I think it did us good. However, the other times when you have to write letters for official purposes, I think this is a method that is still there that cannot go away for now. Okay? So we are saying that the letter that you're writing or in the manner in which one addresses or salutes infers to the reader depends to the formality or informality. Okay? So the formality or informality will be related to either you're writing to a relative, are you writing to a friend, and um, are you writing to maybe for official purposes. So that one will differ in the way you address. Of course, if you're writing for official purposes, there's no way you're going to give informal addresses or you're going to informally address these people. Uh, in most cases, you'll say, dear sir. So if you're going to write maybe for info, uh, in, informal situations, like maybe to relatives or friends, especially friends that we are so close, you could say, you, you could be a little informal, hey, hello, and so on. So we're going to look at different ways of informalities that we have, and uh, or some types of letters that we may have. Uh, we're going to begin with what we call informal, uh, or, or let's say, type, if you're going to look at types of letters here, we're going to look at one informal, informal letters, and then we shall have what we call formal letters. Sometimes this can be called um, business, other times official, official letters. So you're going to see that there is slightly a difference or a big difference uh, between informal and formal letters as this may go. Um, let us begin with the informal letters. With informal letters... So, like we talked about uh, at the level of formality and informality. With informal letters, you're going to realize that these are letters that we write to, uh, to friends, relatives. So, we would say these are letters written to close relatives and friends. Okay? There are those relatives that we are so close to. You have that maternal auntie of yours that you're really so close to that anything you really want to write to talk about, you can run to her. You have that paternal uncle or maternal uncle that you're so close to that every time you have an issue, you may not even talk to your parents, but you run to them or you write to them. So you let them know you're so close to them. So we have those close relatives that we can easily or casually talk to. So you would write a letter to them. So you can express yourself uh, uh, informally without any fear. You know, casually, the person you can talk to anything in any way without being so formal. How will he say? How should I, how, I mean, how should I express myself? How should I, without being so conscious. That is what we mean by uh, close relatives or the, the informal letters, the level of informality. So for example, this could be letters to parents, um, an uncle, could be a cousin, could be a brother, a sister, penny poor friends, etc. There could be so many that people, uh, such people that you casually, or rather you can casually express yourself to. The main intention of these informal letters is normally to greet, exchange ideas, or to ask something, uh, and any other casual communication. So maybe the main um, thing to notice here is that there is called casual communication. Casual communication. You do not have to prepare yourself to communicate with these people. You do not have to think so much of what to say, unlike uh, the formal letters or the level of formality. You, you, you just say or talk or write whatever comes into your heart or out of your heart. Because you know these people will understand you. They will not judge you. They will really get what you're trying to say. And sometimes you can even use those short forms that you would want to use. However, when it is for exams, I ask you not to, even if it is an informal letter. But you could go around with your level of casuality, uh, meaning um, informality, um, and then be casual in your communication. However, when it comes to the language, while we are marking, we shall not, uh, we shall not adhere to, uh, to, to the short forms and so on, that those other so many slangs that you may use. But you can still be casual in correct uh, use of English language. So um, let us look at the formal letters.
Um, like I said, there is uh, a, 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 a difference between informal letters and formal letters. However much the informal letters are written to express ourselves in a casual manner or a casual way or uh, uh, in a way of informality. With the formal letters, they are official and formal. I, I believe at this level, senior three, senior four, we are able to understand what official and formal means. So we are saying these are, these are official and formal letters that are sent to either people we know or those we may not. The examples include apology letters, letter of complaint, application letters, resignation letters, recommendation letters, and so many others that we may have as our example. So here we are looking at expressing the level of formality and official. You must be official. <coughs> official and formal. So in other words, when I say official and formal, that means that you must have organized yourself and present yourself in a manner that you, because you're going to be judged. The person or the people who are going to read your letter in a formal setting are, are going to judge you, depending on anyway what your intention is and what their intention or what they want from you. Okay? If it is an, a job, if it is a job application letter, there is no way they're going to give a job to somebody who cannot correctly express themselves, unless otherwise. There is no way. So if it is a job application letter, you must sit down and organize yourself. If they want handwritten anywhere, you must make sure that your addresses are well organized and in, the, in their proper uh, places or positions. You must make sure that your language is formal. And again, you don't have to write a lot, in, like in informal letters. Maybe what I didn't tell you is that with informal letters, I remember those days when you used to write letters to our friends. First of all, when you look at the language, you would want to show your friends that you know more English than they do. English, but easy to understand and correctly written. And then maybe with informal letters, I remember we used to write them so long. You have forgotten this. You, you, you ask about the... Um, your friends' siblings, then you write about, they ask their parents, you ask about the other game you played the other year. Does that person still play that game? What about the other novel they read? Do they have it in their school? I mean, something like that. You had to write a lot. You even had to maybe ask even about the animals at home. But with the formal letters, like I said, you must be concise and precise. You must be brief. Because the other people are not so much interested in reading a lot of what you have to write. They're most interested in, you get to the point, why are you writing this letter? And maybe briefly, who are you? Talk about yourself. What are you best at? And simply that, then they get to know who you are. And actually, sometimes you may find that many of them may not be interested in reading a lot about you. So you may find that in these formal letters, they will, um, especially when it comes to an application letter, they may read about what you, you're writing about, who you are, maybe how old you are, and maybe your bit of qualification at your level of education and maybe qualification what you're good at, basically. And maybe the referees. So you have to be very precise. One page is just enough for you. A few words and just a few paragraphs, like four, you know. They're just enough for you. You don't need to go beyond that. Unlike informal letters, okay? Uh, let us continue with, informal, uh, with formal letters. Well, I want us to look at the difference between the two. Even when I have slightly uh, given you uh, some simple difference, but at least now let's go to uh, what I organized as the difference between formal letters and informal letters. I think we can look at, uh, on our screens and then see these differences. If you look at the side of formal letters, we are saying it has two addresses. Okay? Formal letters, you're going to see that it has two let I mean addresses. That is the addresser's address 
and then the addresses address so with the, at least when you know that the category of the letter you're going to write falls under formal or official letters in the back of your mind you should remember that you must use two addresses okay um two addresses then what do we have under informal we are saying that with informal letters these have only one address and that is the addresser's address the addresser's address is that address of the what of the writer the person who is writing the person addressing so if you are from um, let's say let's use the name of the schools but one thing you have to remember maybe i should caution you on is that when you are writing in examination you are not expected to use the address of your school you could use any other any other address let's uh, assume that they have asked you to apply for a job during your senior for vacation and then may, uh, many of you would rush very fast to begin using your school's address anyway the question is after all during vacation you're not in that school so you could come up with a, any address of your choice maybe where you stay okay maybe where you stay you could write the address uh, uh, let me give an example because sometimes students get stuck and they say if i don't use the address of my school which other address can i use i'm discouraging you from using the address of your of your school um so maybe you would come and say kinawataka trading center i would say kinawataka trading center PO box 755 Kampala or you, or you, you could say Kampala you could say Kamocha and then you come here and you put your what your date So you have used the place maybe well, you have um, what should i say a box you have a box uh, a, a post office box in this center so you, you are going to use this and then uh, as your address so that when they write it will come to this and then you will pick it from there so basically what you have to understand is that we only we are only interested in knowing whether you know how to write a letter and if you remember the definition that i gave at first was the art the art of writing so don't all of you go to writing chinawataka trading center just be creative you come up with some more kind of so long as it suits this the place where the letter is going create the box number come up with that place uh, maybe the general town or uh, there's a district where that that uh, place is and then the date what we are interested in is seeing exactly the first of all the format and then where the letter is going and then your organization okay so be creative enough you do not necessarily need to use the address of your school that is a sign of copying anyway so don't use the name of your school but be creative and come up with something that will suit what we really want now if you look at this this is the addresses address where the letter is coming from and if a person wants to write back to you will use this very address but like we have said that when it comes to formal letters we have two addresses which means we shall need the other address whose address is that the addresses now the addresses address is the receiver's address in simple terms the person who is receiving this letter the person's address should be there as well as you're writing or before you even continue to write the address i mean the letter where is this uh, letter going so you tell us or you give us if it is an application letter in most cases in that number they may uh, give you the place or let's say the company the factory uh, if it is a tv station if it is wherever it is going okay now let me assume you are applying a job 
at BBS the refiner. You will come here and say the human resource human resource manager. My space is very small, but I, I imagine yours will be because you're not supposed to at least to come this way. Manager BBS. Uh, Terefina Fina P.O. Box P.O. Box 605 It may not be the correct address And maybe we shall put uh, uh, Maybe Mengo Kampala Okay This is just an assumption of the address that you may write to. Maybe you're applying for a given job at BBS Terefina. So this is basically what I'm, how I'm going to expect you to write because these are the receivers. The human resource manager's office is the receiver of your letter. So this is the address's address, the person you are writing to, the person who is about to receive your letter, the person who is, uh, who is uh, going to read your letter. So that is uh, the address's address. So basically, those are the two addresses we expect in a formal letter. But with informal letter, like we have said, for it, it has only one address. So that's why you could go away with only Chinawataka Trading Center, PO Box 755, Kampala, and then the date. You could go away with that and then continue writing your, your letter. So basically, that is one difference. Then... Um, Uh, then when it comes to uh, the second difference, we have, uh, it has, uh, with the formal letters, has a title. Okay. Has a title. Um, maybe we may ask, what is this title? This title is basically the, the reference. Okay. This title is basically the reference. But before we go to the title, I, I think uh, the salutation should come, should come first before the title. Let's look at the salutation. Uh, the salutation of uh, formal letter, you're going to realize that uh, uh, in formal settings, we shall begin with the dear, dear sir, dear madam. We do not stroke. We put a comma on each, but we do not, you cannot say dear sir, stroke madam. In English language, we do not believe that a person can be either a he or a she. We believe that person has, uh, is either, a, I mean is a he, can be a he or a she, but not either way. So, I, actually, even when we are constructing sentences, we do not say he or she, but we say he, and then we say she. So here, most times we make these mistakes and we say in our salutation, dear sir, stroke dear madam because you do not know who is sitting in that office you don't have to know if you are confused on whoever is sitting in that office let's take an example of uh, the human resource manager of bbs you do not know whether the human resource manager is a woman or a man just put dear sir it will not matter whoever will be reading that letter whether it's a man or a, a, a woman will not, it will not matter because you did not know that person but do not stroke however if you're sure that the person sitting there is a woman Please indicate, dear madam. If you're sure that person is a man, indicate, dear sir, to be specific. Okay? But there are also other times with the formal letters where you could know the name of that person. Okay? You could know the name of that person. Then you could say, uh, dear Mr. Let's say, dear Mr. Mukasa. Okay? You could say, dear Miss, uh, Miss Katana. Hmm? Let's take an example of a school, a school where you, are you have been asked to write a lot of apology, a lot of apology. And then when you're writing this letter, you know that teacher Katana asked me to write the letter. Okay? So you may not necessarily say, dear madam. Even if you said it, it would be correct. But you could as well go ahead and... Uh, address the letter to 
Miss Katana or Mr. Mukasa, if you know the name of that person. However, the most formal way is dear sir, dear madam. Now let's look at the side of uh, formal letters, I mean informal. So when you look at the salutation of the informal, we're going to see that here we are not limited. Actually, like we said that we are writing, we are writing a, few, uh, a few things or a few words in the, in the formal letters. When it comes to informal letters, we are not limited. So you can decide to come up with different words that are casual or to, 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 to bring the other or to show how close you are to the person you are writing. Okay? The person you are writing to. So with a salutation here, you could go ahead and say, Hello. Could use hello. Um, hello, let's say, hello, Sarah. You know? You could say, hey. Uh, hey, let's say, hey. Hey, Shid. Hmm? You could say, hi. Hi, Shiba. Hmm? And so many others. Here, you, you, you're being informal, okay? You're being informal, you're being casual, because you, you're so close to the person that you're writing this letter to, and it is okay. But here, the, the level of formality has to be high because they are formal and they are, uh, they, they, they are used for official purposes. That's why you have to be formal when it comes to formal letters. Then let's go to the... Uh, maybe I should have given you an example here. Because at the end of the day, many of you are going to come and say, but now where do we write this? Maybe one thing I did not talk about when it came to the addresses. However much there are two types of writing addresses when it comes to the, addresses, the addresser's address when it comes to formal letters. I want the candidates to go for this format of slanting. Please slant your address. If you look at my address, is slanting. And when I tell students sometimes to slant, they cannot do it. If it is not possible, in your brain, draw this margin. You may not necessarily draw it physically, but you draw it. Or what you do, make sure that if after writing the first line, when you're writing the second line of your address, maybe leave about three or two letters. Then the same applies to the third. And when you're writing the date, you come back to the same line of where you started. So that your address is slanting. So we shall take the slant. And maybe another thing I did not talk about was the uppercase of the letters that I have used. I have not used capital letters like many of you do. Yes, many of our friends in primary schools, they go for this. It is their way of doing it. But for us in secondary school, we do not accept the capital letters. Please do not use them. The moment you use the capital letters, <laughs> uh, my dear, you will not get any marks for this address. And yet this address can carry, the address with the date can carry you some two marks. So you can miss out on this. So make sure you use the, 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 the lower case. Those are the small letters. And you can only capitalize the first letter of the, of the words that you're using in your address. For example, when you see Kinawataka, I capitalize the K. When you see Trading Center, I capitalize the T. When you see Center, I capitalize the C. So the rest are in small letters, or what we call the lower case. And even as you come here. Now some of us will make sure that we write this very well, the first line. And then it comes to Kampala, somebody capitalizes it. You are missing out on marks, and the whole address will be wrong. And then the punctuation marks. I wish students would be very conscious at the way I am punctuating. If you look at the way I've, well, after Chinawataka Trading Center, I put a comma. When I came to P.O. Box and I put the number, I had to put a comma there. Then when I came to Kampala, I had to put a full stop. My address has ended there. So these, are, these punctuation marks are very important. Actually, I tell students that if you think you'll forget, this one is just a whisper. Do not punctuate at all. But now some of you, what you will do, you'll come here and put a comma, then you'll come here and put a full stop or even a comma. You are wrong. By the way, in English language, punctuation marks are very important because they infer meaning. The moment you mess up with them, you're not communicating at all. And so you will be marked wrong. Look at my, um, the way I've written the date. Sometimes you could go ahead and maybe put Monday, something like this, if you wanted to put that day. Okay? 
but it should come first. Maybe Monday, 12 of May, comma, 2020. If you don't want to put the name, I mean the, 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 the day of, the, of that date, you may for, forget it because we, shall still we can look it up on the calendar. If you put 12 of May, comma, 2020, full stop, okay? This comma should be there if you're going to put the full stop here. If you know you'll forget this full stop, forget also about the comma. But I encourage the students to make sure that they do not forget these because they are very important. You know with the candidates, when you give them the either side, then they will go for the wrong one. So punctuate. That's what I should tell you. Punctuate. Because you say, but what did she say in the exam? Oh, you punctuate if you don't want to punctuate. If before you know it, you have punctuated somewhere and then you have forgotten somewhere. So punctuate it all. It is easy if you can practice and master it. The punctuation marks still continue when it came to the address, uh, to the address's address. You've seen how I've put my commas carefully. And then when it came here, I put still. When it came to Kampala, main Kampala, I put a full stop. Okay? Now, I was on the salutation. I wanted to give an example. Before I got to the salutation, our first address is slanting. This address is not slanting the address of the addressee. Okay, the receiver's address is not slanting for it, it is block. It is only the, the writer's address that is slanting. So this one is written in block. But you have also realized that I've used the lower case, apart from the main words there, like the human resource manager. Eh? Manager here is supposed to be capital M. I hope you know how to write a capital M. The H is capital here. The R for resource is capital. The M for manager is capital. I've written a BBS in capital letters because it is an abbreviation. Okay? Then telephone, now you've seen that T, I have put it in capital letters. Then the same come, applies to here. Okay? Even mango here is in capital letters. But the rest are in small. Kampala here, K is capital letters and the rest are small. So please be conscious of these punctuation marks and what I've written. Then I'm coming here and I'm saying that we are going to salute that dear sir. And I have put a comma. Okay? Dear sir. And I have put a comma. I hope you do see that. Eh? While you're saluting, this is how in a formal way, this is how you're going to write. But the assumption is if you were writing uh, an informal letter, you are going to say hello, and you know, remember, formal letter, an informal letter does not have the two addresses. Okay? Uh, so let us continue with our differences. Let us continue with our differences. Apart from the salutation, okay, the other is the, the, uh, the title. We talked about the title. So the title. The, of, the formal or official letters have titles, and here you're going to have, you may call it the reference if you want, and it is going to come here. Okay? The title. So here, the title is the, more of a subject. It is going to show us what actually you're writing about. That is for formal letters. If it is an application letter, you'll say, re- Reapplying for a job. Okay? Reapplying for a job. So you are writing an application letter, and this is a title. So here we are saying that it has a title, but when it comes to the informal letters, it does not have any title. There is no need for a title. Okay? Does not have a title. Uh, and then we continue to the other differences, maybe the language. If you look at the language in a formal letter, you're going to look at the level of formality or informality. When it comes to formal letters, you must be formal. And no wonder we said that the words don't have to be so many. And maybe you're going to ask, how formal should I be? You must be, yes, polite, but still formal. When you are starting to write your letter, you're going to, we're going to expect you, we're going to expect you to use words like hereby. I hereby apply for a job of uh, 
a cleaner in your company. Students don't want such jobs, you know. Uh, I hereby apply for a job of a messenger in your company, but when you're at the level of senior four, what more can you do, you know? But we, but we can apply for those jobs, okay? I hereby apply for a job of a sales person in your company or in your factory or in your uh, wherever you're applying that job from. So you could say, I humbly apply for the given job. I mean for the job mentioned there above, as you, you, you tell us which job that is. That is a formal way. So we do not have to be such formal or the, that formal if you're looking at it, informal letters. Informal letters, you're going to be, when we're saying that with informal letters, informality in language is accepted. Like, uh, hey, hello, I hope, I wish that you did this. Um, and so many way, other way of ca uh, being casual. It is accepted, unlike uh, when it comes to formal letters. So let us look at, uh, at, uh, at referees. With formal letters, you expect it to have, uh, to have referees. Uh, with informal letters, you do, you're not expected. What is the use of referees? Uh, especially when it comes to application letters. Application letters. You're going to be expected to have people to, who would recommend you in case they are being called on. So during your, uh, writing, uh, during your writing of application letter, at the end, when you're about to close, we expect you to come up with about two or three referees. People you think can talk about you, can talk good about you. But these must be people in substantial positions somewhere. Sometimes in the very company that you are applying, where you're applying, uh, and others may come from other, other companies or other places of work. But these people should be holding some positions that are, are really at a given level. Okay? So that these people can come and talk, can, I mean, can talk good about you in case they're called on phone, in case they're written to, they can write back and uh, talk good about you. But like we have already said, please... Tell these people to, 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 to tell, call them before you put them as your, as your referees. Okay? So let us uh, have an example of a, a formal letter. We're going to look at a letter of complaint. Letter of complaint. Uh, let's look at a letter of complaint. Uh, and then we have its example. We are saying, we're going to... Uh, sometimes you may not need to underline when you've written capital letters. So here we are with letter of complaint. So we are saying, wh what is the letter of complaint? It comes from complaining or complain. Uh, we are saying that this is an example of a formal letter. This is an example of a formal letter. And it is written to react to poor services, purchases, deliveries, etc. And so many other things you may complain about. It is meant to ask the receiver to take action in order to remedy the situation. So we can look at the content uh, very fast. What must we have in this letter? We should have uh, the organization as the correct layout, as you may see on your screen. Uh, correct layout, uh, appropriate salutation, logically organized paragraphs. The language should be straightforward. The tone should be polite and firm. Then we look at the explanation. Should explain why you're writing this letter. Why are you complaining? Explain what the problem is and describe any action yeah, that has already been taken. So what inconvenience it has caused you or to the public. Then state what you want to be, to be done. Okay? State what you want to be, to be done. Then let's look at that actual letter, how it can be, it can be written okay, or how it looks like. So we're going to look at uh, uh, an example of a letter of complaint. Uh, here we have Kayunga High School, P.O. Box 70. You can read on your screen as you see. So you have seen that that is how you punctuate your letter the way I have punctuated mine. The TH went up on the date, but it's supposed to be on the same line. Please mark that. 
Then when you come to the side of the addresses address, you see the head teacher, Kayunga High School, PO Box, and that and that. Dear sir. So we are complaining about poor service, I mean cafeteria services. Cafeteria, that means the mess, the kitchen, or the, the dining uh, services from the dining. Okay? And there we shall say, um, when you look at our, our subject there, re, poor, cafeteria, services. Then I hereby write this letter to express our dissatisfaction about the food served in the school dining hall. On behalf of the student's body, I forward the outcry for your immediate attention. Our, on several occasions, beans with numerous weevils, burnt and half-cooked posho, are served. There are more stones in the rice than the rice itself. To make matters worse, the meat that is always served on Sunday as a special meal is always as hard as a stone. Not to mention the porridge, which was always, water, which is, was always watery. In addition to above, the cooks have proved to be very rude. Some cooks like Kabode, Kabode, Mama Sina, do abuse students and shout at them. You know the names of your cooks at school when they complain about the dirty plates on which food is served. Consequently, many students have fallen sick of stomach aches, ulcers, others have been operated on because of indigestion issues. Owing to this, some parents have started to withdraw their children from school. The nurse is also well, well overwhelmed with the increasing numbers of students complaining of stomach issues. I therefore, on behalf of my fellow students, feel that the school authorities need to do something about the bad food served to students and the cafeteria staff. Yours faithfully, that is the signature, Okelo Pius, cafeteria, prefect. So you see, you can put your title there, uh, in which capacity are you writing? So basically, that is an example of uh, a formal letter or letter of complaint. Okay? Now that we have seen that example and we have seen how to write one, maybe I can give you a question that you may try on as you write your own letter. This time we are not going to write a letter of complaint. We are going to write a resignation letter. So let us go for the question. The question is, rather the task, we are saying, assuming The other prefect Assuming you are the prefect in charge of sports and games at your school, write a letter resigning from the post. So you could have so many uh, reasons why you're resigning, but please what we are interested in is following the format that we have been given. Thank you so much for attending to this lesson. Um, you can forward your responses as usual.